It's the 15th of December, and uh, as is coming up to Christmas pretty quick, and we're going to a Christmas party tonight, I thought I might make some mince tarts. Um, I just bought store-bought uh, mince tart filling in jars. You can get it pretty cheap uh, at certain times of the year. And uh, I just bumped this one up with some bourbon soaked raisins, um, which I've actually had in the cupboard for a few years as well, in a jar. Uh, they're fine, they're not going to go off. Um, so that's your filling. This pastry, that's my recipe, you'll have a recipe uh, of your own probably. And if you don't, um, Prairie Plant Girl uh, made a tomato galette and that pastry would be perfect uh, for this. I'll put a link in the description below. Also, if you would prefer to make your own mincemeat, um, uh, Kate from uh, The Last Homely House made a wonderful mincemeat pie filling with candied orange peel. And I'll put a link to that video below as well. But this is just boom, boom. I'm going to do that. The one thing I will <clears throat> uh, deviate from with the average mince pie is I'm going to make a frangipan filling. Frangipan is uh, an almond paste, very soft almond paste if you're not familiar with it. It's got butter and eggs and you just put a dollop on top of your finished pie before they go in the oven and it'll just melt right down and go all golden and soft and put a nice little topping on it. Okay, so in this bowl, I'm gonna start with 180 grams of unsalted and softened butter with 200 grams of caster sugar. This is also called uh, berry sugar here in Canada and I think in the States it's called super fine. Um, it's just nice for cakes um, and French pan will be a lot lighter if you use the fine sugar. Uh, okay, and then over here I have my scales and there is 180 grams of ground almonds three eggs, which I have lightly beaten, and the other, and only other, ingredient is uh, half a teaspoon of pure almond extract. Uh, obviously, I will write the recipe below, uh, but here is the method. So I've just creamed the sugar and the butter. Um, I thought I'd spare you um, the noise from this stand mixer, uh, which throws the levels right into the red on this uh, on this camera. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of almond extract. And then the eggs, I'm just going to <clears throat> add a little bit at a time while the machine is running on low. Um, we'll see how this how, how loud this is for you. Hold on. Yeah, we're moving into the red there. Okay, well, a little bit of time. Right, I'm just going to fold the ground almonds in by hand because I can't stand the noise of the mixer anymore and it should be folded in anyway. Keeps it nice and light. I'll do about half at a time, just with a spatula, nice beating there, and I'll put the last bit in there, just folding in. Now, you should have a nice almond paste. about that texture. So you really can't, you can just dollop this on. So that's mixed. That's good. You can keep this in the fridge until you want to use it. Um, other uses for this beautiful French pan, um, which by the way, I know there's raw eggs in it, but mm, it's gorgeous. Um, it's for tarts. I used to work in a bakery and uh, we would fill blind baked pastry shells in those nice fluted 
French tart tins um, with French pan and just tinned halved pears and then we would bake those and glaze them with a nice apricot glaze. They were really, really nice. Um, if you buy some croissants, you can slice them in half, fill them with this, close them, put more almond paste on the top and some slivered almonds and bake them and they're absolutely delicious. So let's get on with it. Hello. I'm just watching the birds in the backyard. They're flitting around everywhere. Uh, it's really windy today and uh, they're hanging on for dear life at the feeders. So <clears throat> anyway, so here we are. I uh, don't know how well you can see this, but uh, I'm just filling these pastry cases with the mincemeat. Um, not too full because they'll bubble up and then you're going to put the French pan on top. Um, I had kept the pastry and the frangipan in the fridge while I waited for the oven to preheat um, to 190 Celsius, uh, 375 Fahrenheit. So here they are, ready for the oven. Um, I put my muffin tin on another tray and they have a tendency sometimes to bubble over. Um, the mincemeat, this particular mincemeat uh, from the jar uh, is, is quite runny. Um, so yeah, we'll put those in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes. Again, as I said, 190 C, 375 Fahrenheit. Okay, so our uh, timer's just gone off. I've, <laughs> I have a very slow oven, so it took a lot more than 20 minutes. But uh, if you have a small oven, It'll probably be 15 to 20 minutes. So there they are, straight out of the oven. Hubbling and bubbling. We didn't spill over the tray, which is good, but uh, they come out all nice and puffy, but they do sink down a little bit. That's normal. Uh, as the hot steam uh, dissipates and uh, they cool down. So I'm just gonna leave those in the tin to just cool completely and then I'll just take a little knife scrape them out and uh, you can uh, dust them with icing sugar when they're at room temperature not before or the sugar will melt um, if you want I won't be I think they're gonna be sweet enough well I hope you enjoyed those um, the recipe is below and uh, I have sent uh, uh, added links to Prairie Plant Girl for her pastry and to Kate Jackson at the last homely house east of the sea for her mincemeat recipe with candied orange peel, which I will be making next year. I'm not going to be so lazy and buy store-bought next time. Uh, anyway, enjoy and a very Merry Christmas if I don't see you before. Take care.